What's up guys, welcome back to Animal Drawing. Uh, we're still discussing cats today, so we're just gonna jump straight into this. You might recognize these diagrams from last time where we discussed the cat's head. Today we're gonna go over the cat's arms um, or limbs or whatever you wanna call them, legs. Um, so two things that we wanna really take account of. First thing being that their arms are not human arms. Very important. You see this all the time in art where people don't exactly have an education on the anatomy of what they're drawing. And I'm not saying things can't look cool stylized. I'm just saying sometimes when someone tries to draw something realistic but they don't really know what's going on underneath, you can really tell. And one of the things that makes that really obvious is the fact that they're putting human anatomy onto the animals. You can see clearly here that the arm is very different. Our arm does not bend like this. Um, our legs don't bend like that, or we don't keep our legs in a constant bend like that. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss this. What I always think of when I think um, any four-legged creature is their arm is usually creating some sort of zigzag. What do I mean by that? Well, you got this way, this way, this way, this way. So it's kind of zigzag. Same with the back leg or the hind leg, you go forward, zigzag back. The amount of joints that we have is different, right? Where we have two, we have our upper arm and our lower arm, and then of course you can count. We're counting the hand as another joint, we have three of them. So you got one, two, three, and then their hand is four, okay? On the hind leg, same thing, one, two, three, and four. This is what gives our, the cats the ability to really kind of bend their arms in and stuff like that. When you see a cat lay down and they really tuck their arms in, it's because they kind of have that final two joints at the bottom there that really give them that extra range of flexibility. When we're talking about the front two legs of the animal here, what we have to consider and we can't really leave out of the arm drawing is the shoulder blade. Okay, this is very prominent on cats especially. You see it, it creates that bump, right? And we're just like when we're drawing humans, we're always gonna be looking for what's known as bony landmarks where the bones protrude and they make the skin bump out or you can actually feel it if you were to touch the animal there, you could feel the structure of their bones underneath their skin and their muscle, right? So we know that cats have really high shoulder blade. This is one of the things that helps give them their powers, helps give them their range of motion, their jump ability, all that stuff. So now we have even more of a zigzag when it comes to that front arm, right? Because now we're thinking, going this way, this way, and then this way. Another thing I want to mention is when you're thinking about drawing both of the legs, we have to remember that they're wrapping around or they're to the side of a rib cage. So there's a three-dimensional object in between them that is keeping them from touching each other, right? So if I were to draw just a quick makeshift front view, have a rib cage, something like this, okay? the cat's head is somewhere up here and then the arms are coming they're wrapping around they're wrapping around so now discussing bony landmarks right where do we see the bones protruding mainly from the body on the cat and this can be hard if you have a really, a really fluffy cat too this is even harder because the more fur an animal has the more it kind of hides their anatomical features you know as humans we just have skin we might have some humans that are more hairy than others but we're not technically covered in fur Right, so you can see, you know, exactly where my elbow is, and you can see my ankle joint and where my forearm meets my hand, um, my clavicle, my shoulder blades on my back, etc., etc. But on a cat, it might be hard, you know, if a cat is overweight or really fluffy, or just, you know, looking at a cat in general, sometimes you just don't notice these bony landmarks. Where we can see things, you know, I mentioned this one before, we got the bump of the shoulder blade. We have essentially the elbow bump right here. This protrudes out right here as a little bump. And then of course their paws are not so um, covered in muscle structure or anything like that. So if you do feel a paw, you can generally feel the bones. And you can usually feel these three bones too. Their phalanges in there. Now for the back, the back has a lot of muscle covering it. So this can be hard. Sometimes on some cats you'll see a little more of a bone structure right here. Not often though, because the skin is usually pretty loose and kind of transitions right into the stomach like the diagram is showing. But sometimes you'll have a little bony landmark right there. You have this big kind of calcaneus most bone coming out right here, and it creates a little bump right there as well. You can kind of see it over here in the back drawing. 
And then of course this part of the leg kind of thins out with the muscle structure. So you can really feel all this and it kind of just follows around the structure. And one last thing I want to talk about is when we are thinking about drawing a paw. So we have a simple shape, right, where it kind of looks like this. And this really does work. But you also want to remember that if you can see here, the shapes overlap. You know, I know in a lot of my lessons, I really drive this point home. But you have one shape with another shape like that. So we don't see, you know, the paw. We don't see the paw like we see fingers or something like that, not from this point of view. So you just want to remember when you're drawing the paw, the position of the bones is what's going to let you know where they have those little paw separations in there. All right, so stepping off with our x-ray glasses here, we're going to step one layer back, look at the muscle structure. Important things to notice here as well, you don't have too many um, super thick muscles in the front that kind of, you know, hide the bony landmarks and stuff like that. This is pretty good because it kind of, it sticks closer to the bone, right? But we don't have that kind of generosity given to us from this anatomy in the back. So as you guys can see, there's a really thick muscle that just lays across the hind leg right there. This is one of the reasons that cats can jump so much higher than their own body height, right? Um, this is, it's just like, think of it as an elastic band that's always tight and ready to just kind of spring. Now looking at the muscle structure, this is our last chance to really get an idea of what's going on underneath that fur structure. You might have some cats that look like this if they're really short fur or maybe like a furless cat or something like that. But for the most part, we don't get to see the muscle structures on a cat like you might be able to see on a bigger creature like a horse that's very short hair, right? So let's see if we can break down some of these shapes to help us kind of indicate where we can go with the drawing when we're drawing it. Starting off with the easiest one, we have the hind legs, which I already kind of drew, but you want to think of this as a big rectangle shape. Okay. Always keeping your, your curves too, so like instead of drawing a hard angle square or rectangle or whatever you're drawing when you're drawing these shapes, you know, just remember it is an organic shape so it's gonna look a little more organic if you round things off. So next we have the leg going into the bottom paw. And what I want to think of this one as is it's just kind of a tapering kind of cylinder or rectangle again. And then this is gonna lead into another one. Always kind of thinking of things tapering and meeting each other as they get closer to the source of where they're standing, right? Because their leg, it starts off big and then it gets smaller and smaller and smallest. So finally here at the bottom, you kind of just have, I would think of it mostly as like a box shape because this is a kind of 3D structure. You can find it as a rectangle if you like, um, but you want to think like, are you seeing the top of it? Are you seeing more of the side of it? What do you see? So the front leg a little bit harder, right? Because these muscles aren't so defined into shapes, but you can of course make them simply into shapes. You see a lot of you know this kind of blending into this but we want to think of this as we know the leg is going this way okay so we can kind of give ourselves a little taper there and then we know that this leg is going down okay nice taper shape taper and then this kind of comes into our squared off pad okay and then remember, um, if we're going to draw it in, we have our nice big kind of shoulder blade shape up here as well. So what does this all mean when we're looking at an actual cat that is, you know, covered in its fur, its skin, and all that stuff? Well, we've got to kind of remember, we don't have to remember detail per detail, we don't have to remember what the bones names are and all that stuff. We have to just kind of give ourselves that visual thought of, okay, I can remember that the, the bone is somewhere up here going this way. I know it's going to come down this way. I can see the bony landmarks that we were talking about. See the change here. And then of course we have the change where the, the paw meets the ground. I think if you need to remember, you just got the one, two, three, four. Other side, we have the same thing, but it's kind of just moving in the opposite direction, right? So you can, you can really easily see the tilt of the pelvis right there. So if that's something that helps you, feel free to kind of have that in your drawing. And then, you know, the leg comes through to here. You can really see where that bone is meeting right there. We 
you know, it goes, it zigzags back to here. Again, we got that bony landmark. And then of course, it just tapers in to the paw like that. And you can always count it out. One, two, three, four. Now what about the shapes? Do they still exist? Well, to me, I really see them pretty clearly. So you come in here, you can remember that we have that nice big shape within here. And you can be pretty broad with this because again, when you look at a normal cat, you're not getting all the details going on in there, right? Technically, if you're looking at the picture, it was somewhere up here like that. We had a tapering effect here. But again, we're just looking at the cat normally, so I'm gonna break it down into a more simple structure. Like that, we have our taper in here. And then we have our paws right here, which we can always consider as a square. What are we looking for when we look at the front leg? Well, starting right here, you have that nice cylinder taper, which is really kind of obvious and straight up. I really like that this cat has this bony landmark right here. It tells me right where that switch is, so I'm gonna make that. Again, I always think of my tapering, where two objects are coming together. And of course, we have our paw. Just like so. And then we also know that this isn't just the end of the arm, right? Because as we look at the anatomy, this might be what looking at a cat like this suggests, but we know that the arm is coming somewhere up here. And you can kind of see that separation if you start to look and use that knowledge, right? I can see a little bit of where this is bending in. And we might not want to add this in as hard lines in our drawing, because obviously you don't see it, but you might, you might want to give yourself a little indication of like, yeah, this is where that goes. And you can even see where the shoulder blade goes in there too. So now it's time for practice, right? So how we're gonna put this to practice is similar to how we put to practice with human anatomy, where we're just gonna try our best to zone into just the arm. All right, so just that box area right there is what we're gonna focus on. And they give us something to draw off of, of course, because it might just seem a little odd to just draw a floating um, cap leg or limb arm. Uh, we're gonna draw in a shape just like this goes off and off to the side. So that gives us kind of like a place mark of the body. You guys can draw it in like that if you need to. But this way we can come in and find all of our landmarks within our drawing as well. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I am gonna look at this drawing. I have my cheat sheet right up here and I'm gonna, over here on the white side, I'm literally gonna figure out that I know the bone's going this way to that landmark. I know it's coming in this way, this way, and that's what's gonna help me build off my structure. So over here, I'm gonna give myself that structure of the body shape that we mentioned, which looks something like this. Okay, good enough. And then now I'm gonna go ahead in and throw in my bony landmark shapes. So you can see this one coming over. This one comes down almost straight. Here. And I know the paw goes this way. And remember, we're drawing nice and light because we're, we're here to make mistakes, right? We're here to erase and figure this out. So I can always keep referring to my reference and that's what we're doing here. So I need to remember the shapes that we we're talking about, right? So I know that I'm going to have a shape here that does some sort of taper. So, round off those bottoms. Here there's a nice little bone landmark, which I'm going to use, and I know it comes to here and here. So the shapes are tapering in, and then it meets down to the floor, where again, I'm just going to draw that pot as a square shape for now. Like that. And then we're going to figure out this top shape up here, um, where I know that the structure is coming somewhere over here, meeting with the chest. And this one is coming up a little bit higher up here. Like so, and I can really I can start to protrude that out a little bit. And then the final step with this is, so now that we have our light basic shape structure, we can always come in and tighten it up. And you guys can do this however you see fit here. I'm gonna really play up these kind of tapering effects. I really like where those bones kind of pop out on this cat. Oh, a lot of 
whatever going on there. I definitely see this connection here. Uh, it's coming with the chest. That's about as much as I see of this structure. Now I'm kind of like deciding, I'm chipping into my shapes, right? This is kind of where you can consider drawing a little bit like sculpture, where you come in and start making the shape you started with into a different shape. You can chip into it, you can add to it. See the paw overlaps here, comes down, and I see that overlap, right? So I see this. It's overlapped here by this part of the paw, which gets overlapped by this paw, or this finger of the paw. And there we go. So we have one arm in there, right? So now let's take a closer look at the behind leg. Alright, so inside that box is what we're going to be drawing, so imagine not everything is blurred out or fuzzy or whatever you need to do. And the first thing we're going to do, just like I still have my lines over here, we're going to find that bone structure on our cat here, so we can remember. So looking up at the cheat sheet, we can see that it first goes forward, and then it goes back. So remembering that, and remembering that we can pretty much see that pelvic tilt right there. We got the spot where it goes forward, right here, you can almost see that, almost like a knee joint meeting right there comes back towards here. Remember, remember this point right here that comes out from the bone. So this isn't going here. It actually goes a little bit lower because this bone starts up there. And then of course you have the bones that lead into the paw itself. Okay, so remember we can always count this out. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, we got all our bones in here. And give ourselves another you know, base shape to build off of. We're literally just going to create kind of like a square here. Just like that, and we're going to build off of that shape. So starting over here, I'm going to give myself that square. Something like that. Doesn't need to be perfect here. All right, and then I know I'm just gonna kind of place it in a diagonal here. This is my pelvis somewhere in there. And I know this is coming down this way, right? With a little bit of like a bent. I always think they have like a, when they're standing normally, they have a bent knee. So I always be thinking that's how the, the bone is crossing through. Have that landmark right there. This bone is coming back around this way. Nice angle on that one too. And then remember, the next bone doesn't start here, it starts right here above it. Comes in, kind of counterbalances right there. That's what's happening. Remember, because cats are essentially just moving springboards. And then you got the paw right there. If you guys need to, you can always check placement, right? I can always take a line from here up and realize, oh, the, the toes are supposed to line up with my knee. So I can take a line down from here and realize, oh, okay, so I need to maybe move my structure a little bit. Maybe have this come a little more like this. And move it over there. And then the, the rest of the paw shape can kind of fish out from there. So what are the shapes we're looking for? So let's look at our Chi Chi. We can see right here we have that big lock shape right here, right? So we can find that on our cat as well. Right here. So we can go ahead and draw that shape in to our picture. So I know it's going to go somewhere around here, right? On this diagonal. Right here, diagonal up. So before it crosses over, going this way. 
So if you need to close off your shapes, you can close off your shapes. I always leave things open. Yeah, a little bit going back here. Remember, wider, thinner. My shape's nice and round and organic. This comes in. Nice tapering effect here. And of course we have the paw meeting the ground like so. I'm just gonna extend that paw a little bit. And then right there we have our basic shape structure, so now we can come in and build on top of those. Alright, so coming in really quick, we can see we have the back hind of the cat here, nice and furry. The leg comes down, and we're just kind of following the shapes that we created. You can add that fur if you like. You know that I see this part of the leg. The fur follows, right, where the, the contour of the body is going. Take this nice little rounded bend here. Okay, Let's see a little bit of this meeting with that bone structure. Comes in. And we have this nice tapered square here. It's a little hard to see because there's that twig in the way in the picture. But we can really see the paw, the overlapping shapes here, and this one here. And then there's one more that's kind of poking out there, which is right there. There you go. So, of course, we know that there's some more light going on up here, but again, in the first structure, you really can't see it. The fur just kind of goes right over and it covers up all that muscle structure. So I have another couple special guests today. This one is another one of my cats. His name is Big Boy. Um, and so he's I'm using him as a laying down reference. So I chose a couple of different pictures from my photo album today where the cats are in different poses, right? Because we're not always going to get a perfect side-facing view. So here I was able to find one where he is pretty much on his side because he's lying down. But his limbs are a little more stretched out. He's really relaxed. He's not focusing on standing or walking. So you have a little bit of a different play on the bone structure there. So I went in, I found that bone structure, and now I'm going to do myself a favor here and just find the shapes. So I'm looking through, looking for those landmarks, the bony landmarks, what the muscle structures are, Got my cheat sheet there up at the top. So I broke down the upper arm, looking for those big shapes, those big muscle shapes in the hind leg. And remembering that taper. So we're always tapering our our shapes, right? Because it gets as it goes down to the feet, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so I'm gonna give myself a shape that I can start with, right? Just like we did with the previous cat, where since I'm just drawing the legs and I'm not drawing the full body, I just kind of need a starting shape. So we got kind of like this wedge shape here. It's like a pizza with a perfectly even bite taken out of it. No bite marks, just perfectly straight. Um, so anyways, I'm just going through here, looking at the bone structure on my reference that I broke down and finding it so you guys can see here too like the way i'm moving through this um, i'm really flowing through it's the same thing as an action line in life drawing that we talked about quite a bit in my figure drawing videos where you just want to think about what is the motion happening here i can see there's one swoop where it's it's you know it's elbow and it goes into his paw and he's curling his paw so i want to show that as almost like an action as a motion it's kind of the interest of what he is doing as the cat, as the character in the picture. So once I'm satisfied with my shape drawing here, I'm gonna come in with my darker color and 
chip away. Again, just like as if it's a sculpture, I'm gonna choose what I want to keep. Make something smaller, make some things bigger. Think about the paw shape now, really kind of define in. Think about my overlapping shapes. And there we go. So I think we're gonna jump to the hind leg here. So I'm gonna start this one off by looking for that shape in the back there. Um, we're not gonna go into this too much today, but the nice thing about drawing cats is that that side, there, you know, the side of their body, the rest of their torso is really just a long rectangular shape. So that's why I'm able to choose these square shapes to kind of take a snapshot of the leg. It's always kind of weird drawing just the limbs of an animal like this because their their limbs are so much closer to their bodies and so much more attached to like to them than like our limbs where our limbs are really just off to the side and you really can separate so finding that bone structure in there remembering the zigzag shape which way it's going and his legs are stretched out but there is still that natural bend in them they always have that bend Well, not always, but in most cases they're gonna have that bend. So I'm going in there, just kind of simplifying it out. Thinking about squaring it off, my tapering. Where's the paw? Take it off, looks like we have a kind of turkey leg there. Hopefully I can turn this into less of a turkey leg with some darker colors. So going over my light pencils now. This is why it's important to draw light, so you don't end up with a turkey leg drawing. <laughs> All right, adding some fur into there, getting a little more or an organic shape, not so squared off anymore. Thinking of my overlapping shapes of the paw. And then just to make this not look so weird, I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit of the, the body touches in here, just to kind of play around. I mean, how many times can you draw a cat and not draw its tail? All right, so here is our famous cat from our last video. If you guys haven't seen that, please check that video out where she made her first debut in the YouTube world here. Um, please excuse her amazing face. This is honestly one of my favorite photos of her. This is the first time she tried on um, like a full chest kind of harness. Usually we just have like um, one that's just a little more like a leash. So it, it, her face is amazing. But it actually did really help to define where these bones were. So this is a pretty good picture because um, you can actually see where that bone is pointing out um, on her chest, which is really interesting. So even though this is a front view, that you still have that zigzag, zigzag shape. So don't forget it, right? It always goes back, then front. Okay, so I'm really trying to simplify this. I'm giving myself roundness to my um, cylinder shapes in there so I can remember where I'm looking, right? If I'm looking down at her at this part or if I'm looking up at her at this part. Because um, remember, limbs, just like on arms of humans and stuff like that, they're all three-dimensional shapes. So thinking of it as a flat shape doesn't always help. Sometimes it helps to just kind of give yourself that three dimensions. Shape I'm gonna build off is just gonna be a simple circle. Um, this is how I would organically just do this anyways, if I'm not overthinking this process anyways. So just coming in, throwing in her chest right now as a kind of circle shape. Always go back in there and define it more. Obviously there's more complicated shapes in there. I'm gonna just kind of knock it down so I can fit in everything. And I'm still thinking that bone structure, right? It goes, it goes back first, then it comes forward. We might not see all of that zigzag deviation, because of the angle, but we still get some of it. So we gotta remember, we always gotta throw that in there. Okay, thinking about the the stance difference, right? So my these feet are in perspective. Um, so one foot is further away than the other in her stance, because she's, she's standing a little bit off to the side, right? So perspective exists, even when something's right in front of you. That's why it's important. All right, just kind of finding a little bit more of my details in here. It's an awkward pose to draw for sure when you don't have any of the rest of the body. So I do start to figure out some of the rest of the body a little later. Um, going in here, 
Just trying to keep my shapes as simple as possible. Tapering everything. Taper, taper, taper. Alright, give her her socks. And... Just figuring it out. It's definitely a time to be sketchy. So here we go, just throwing in a little bit of the rest of her body. Um, which is good. You guys can kind of see how I would go about that too, right? With the simple shapes, blocking it in. And now to tighten it up a little bit. So throwing the fur on always helps the structure look a little more cat-like. Gonna get rid of my distractions on my reference over there. in her stance here. I really want to think about where the the fingers of her paws are. It's hard to see because her paws are white, so you don't really have a clear separation, but they're there. Okay, thinking about how that arm interacts with the chest. And getting it in there. It's definitely a funny image to draw because we don't usually see the cat's arms so defined. But this is something that we do get a really defined arm on. So we're going to do some finishing touches here on stuff we're not talking about today. And then we'll move on to the next one. So this was a really interesting pose that she gave us here. So this is one where her leg is actually fully stretched out. So there is a little bit of a bend as you can see that I'm finding there, but it's very slight. So this is like a really rare case where you're going to see a cat with its leg almost, you know, bones aligned vertically. Doesn't often happen. So now that I've practiced many times, I'm just going to, I just found my bone structure. And I'm just going to go in and see if I can throw in some shapes in here without kind of having to figure all these things out on the page. So I kept myself nice and loose. I was thinking the entire time stretched, elongated, right? I really wanted to pull that shape. She's letting her leg hang down. Gravity's kind of pulling it a little bit. You have all these, um, all these effects coming into play here. So we want to add them into our picture for a nice bit of character. I'm making her foot really long and lanky. Again, kind of having a little bit of a chicken leg thing here, but that's what they look like, you know? Always helps to throw in a little bit of the body there, seeing a little bit of her tail tucked behind. And all right, let's see if we can de this one a little bit too with some fur. So coming in. Looking for those bony landmarks. When the leg's really stretched out like this, you do get some nice bony landmarks, so that really helped. You can really play with her toes. And there you go. That's why having that structure underneath helps so much for that final drawing. All right, last one here. Stick with me, guys. We're just practicing as many different angles as we can. It's the only way to get better. So this is my friend's cat here, and I thought this was a really interesting angle, and I really like the tuck-in. I love when cats tuck their paws in like that. It's so interesting to me. I just like how they kind of, you know, from a certain angle, it almost looks like they just have like a little nub um, for an arm there. And so it's just, it's really cute. So getting to see it from this kind of a perspective, it's cool to see where those joints are bending and how they kind of bulb out a little bit when at the bend. So again, went in there, found my bone structure. Um, because she's laying so flat, you can really see some of her bone structure too there. And I'm just looking for my simple shapes, figuring it out making changes as I need to. We can see her paw pads. So that's a really good thing too, a really good helpful indicator of how to fit in the paws with the picture. And again, just gonna draw a little indication of the body there just so it's not a floating arm, just like we don't like floating heads. We'll knock that down. And come in here and clean this up a little bit. 
So thinking more about my overlapping shapes, what lines are gonna come in front of others, what's more important to show, and what can I leave out? That's always a big decision to make. All right, placing her chest in there, and then the fun part where we get to come in and really figure out those paw pads. Again, this was just such a dynamic pose and something so different too. When you learn the bone structures like the cheat sheet up above, it's really interesting to think of it from this angle. So again, you guys can see me making all my mistakes here and fixing them. But here we go, just kind of threw this one in really quick. All right, guys, and that's gonna be the video on the cat's limbs there. I hope you guys gave it a try. I know it can seem a little complicated at first, especially when I throw all those anatomy pictures at you in the beginning, but I promise it's all just for the learning process. And once you kind of get that shorthand down in your mind of how the bones are zigzagging, which direction, um, you don't even have to really think about the anatomy anymore. So it's just that basic part. Get it down, and then you can get past the complications. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next week we are going to be combining everything that we went over. So last week we went over the head, today was the limbs, so practice those guys up and we're going to put them together with the body. We're going to learn a little bit about the rib cage and the pelvis and then just paste it all together and have our cat. And then we can go on and explore the rest of the zoo animals out there in the world and create our own zoo in our sketchbook maybe. <laughs> Again, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Please leave a comment below if you guys have any really good animal suggestions you'd like me to cover, and I'll get to that in our future videos. All right, guys, have a great day.